All right, what's going on guys? So today we're going to be installing an AM wideband, as you can see here on my C6 Corvette. So the first thing you gotta do is jack the car up, make sure it's secured underneath so it doesn't fall on you because I'm gonna be under the car. And the wideband that I went with is the, uh, here if you can see it, the 0334. The reason I went with this one because on C6 Corvettes and a lot of the newer GM cars, you can plug it in straight into the OBD for data logging. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. So everything's here. So let me get under the car and show you what we have to take apart. All right, now that we're under the car, we can see our exhaust, our headers, X pipe. All right, so we have a couple options here. You can go to a shop, you can get another bung welded in right here for the wideband. But what I'm going to do is, since my secondary O2s are coated out, they don't do anything anyways, I'm just gonna remove the one on the driver's side bank and I'm gonna put the wideband in here. It's already at the right angle, it's in a good spot. So it's pretty simple. You unscrew this, follow the wire, plugs in right there right along the frame and then you can take this out and then you can run your wideband into the cabin so let me get this o2 sensor out and i'm going to show you guys how i'm going to run it all right so now once that o2 sensor is in over there you gotta start taking your interior apart so i already took the center console pretty easy takes a couple minutes there's a couple screws right here, a couple more on the side, over here by the parking brake. And there's, you pull this trim piece out over here and the whole thing slides back, pops out. You can unhook your hazards, heated seats, and your cigarette lighter over here. And you can slide it over. You don't have to unhook anything else and it can just sit there, that's fine. I have an MGW, but it's the same thing, same concept. You gotta take one, two, three, four bolts off and pop this plate off so then you can get access to the tunnel. And once you have access to the tunnel, then we can pull our wires up. So let me get this off and then show you how I'm gonna do that. All right, so this plate slides right off and now you have access to your tunnel, so it's your shifter. So if you look down there, that's your tunnel. You don't see anything, but there's a plate there. So what we're going to do, we're gonna go underneath. We're gonna set everything up with the O2 sensor. We're just gonna feed the wire from the top down. We're gonna feed the wire and you're gonna see it's gonna pop up from the bottom. Okay, so let me show you this. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I have this little claw, okay? And it's a pretty long one. So you press it, you have a little claw. So I'm gonna hook that to the end of this, okay? And I'm gonna push it straight in. You can use a clothing hanger, you can use a string, whatever is easier for you. I'm gonna use this. So let me get that set up. So here you go. You can see wires pushed in pretty good. Let's see, I can get you a light and show you a little better. You can see down there. Here. You can see the bottom of the plate. Let me get this camera to focus there. Bottom of the plate, and you can see the wire with this. And push all the way through. So now I'm gonna go under and grab from the bottom. Now we're back under the car. So you have your O2 sensor, the wideband O2 right there, plugged in, tightened. This is the cable for it, the connector. Okay? So as you can see, we fed that wire. Let's see if I can get a good shot for you guys through the tunnel. So here's the tunnel cover. Okay, this is your torque tube. Okay. So this is the wire. Let me zoom out a little bit here. So this is the wire, okay? So the other end is in the cabin already through the center console area. All right, so here's your wire. And you can see it's running in there. It's running through that thing. So it was pretty much out. I just had to reach my hand in there and grab it and pull it out all the way, okay? Zoom back in. So now all you're gonna do is connect these two. 
pull it back through and then secure this wire away from the exhaust. And I'll show you on the inside. This is your wire. See it's coming through there, through that tunnel, torque tube area. And you're gonna run this to the other end. Okay, so this other end is gonna run into your gauge, wherever you decide to mount it. Okay, here, boom, it's pulled through. So this end goes to your O2 sensor. This end's for the wideband. So if you ever need to replace that sensor, boom, connect it right there and you can pull it right through, no problem. Okay, so now we have to put all this back together and figure out where we're gonna put our wideband. So we have to run this wire. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna have my wideband right here. So I'm gonna have this wire, it's gonna run through here. On the inside, it's gonna go up under this dash panel and it's gonna find its way here and this also like that. Literally, it just clips, pops right out. Okay, so let me get that started. All right, so the last step before this goes on all the way is I cut a little slit right here. So if you look, the wire goes up. So the wire is right there. It goes through this. So we have access once this gets closed. So you don't have the exhaust fumes coming in. That goes down, goes around the shifter, and boom, this sticks out. So now I'm going to reassemble as much as I can here and start running this wire over to where the gauge is going to be. So the wire, I ran it through here because you're not going to see that. It goes here. I dropped this panel, goes up in there, through here, and then it comes up and out the vent. So this is temporary. I'm either going to get gauge pod right here. Or I'm going to take this vent out right here and stick the gauge in there. I'll see what I want to do. So this is all set up. Okay. So now the next step I'm going to show you guys is how to connect the gauge to power. All right. So under here, we're looking for the heated seats fuse because that's the one that turns on with ignition. So that is when you look at this, that's this 10 amp right there that I'm pointing to right there. My finger was just over it, that 10 amp. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull it out and we're going to use a special splice. Let me show you what that is. So we're going to use one of these. So you put the fuse in there, a new fuse. We'll put a 15 amp since the original is a 10. And then you just put your power wire in here and then you ground it off. So I'll show you how, show you how it looks when it's in the car. All right. So I have the wires going here. The ground is connected to that screw right there, which is where the radio is on this metal piece. It runs behind the carpet down here and it's connected to that fuse thing, the fuse splitter. So I have the 15 amp fuse for the gauge and the original 10 amp for the heated seats. And that has power with ignition. So that's how it's connected. Now we're gonna plug it in, plug the gauge in and make sure it works. All right, so we're in the car, ignition on, and it works, it's heating up. So now I get to put all this back together, but the gauge is working. So we did something right. Got to clean up these wires, tuck them behind the knee panel, put the center console back. There we go. Should be working. I'll turn the car on in a little bit. Okay, now that the center console is back, wiring is all done. Only thing left is to do is decide where you want the gauge. Me personally, I'm probably gonna stick it in here in the vent, but if you want a gauge pod up here, you're gonna have that. You can buy the attachment that goes over here. You have a lot of options. So that's all up to preference. And that's up to you to decide how you're going to route these wires. But for the most part, the gauge is in and everything works. So if you like what you saw, leave a comment, like, subscribe, and let me know if you want more videos. Good luck, everyone.